I'm telling you, if you see one movie this year, it's gotta be this one. Sorry guys, I can't give great reviews to every movie I see. This one's only getting three bags of popcorn. I don't know what movies to see this weekend, but we're here to help. It's On Cinema, At The Cinema, with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of On Cinema, At The Cinema. This is my show where we talk about movies and uh, review them. And uh, uh, before we get into the reviews today, I wanna apologize for my behavior last week, and it's just, Unacceptable for me to say that I didn't see these movies. The truth is, I did see them, uh, and, uh, and, and I, don't, I was under a lot of stress and pressure with my health and uh, personal life. But uh, I can assure you that um, I've my, got some good news about my health, uh, that I'm in good shape, and uh, personal life's a different story. But um, I want to apologize to you, the audience, and also to my guest today, Greg Turkington. No apology necessary. It's just fun to be here and be part of the On Cinema family. Well, I put you. I feel like I put you in a weird spot last week, and uh, I apologize. I was glad I could cover because I had seen the movies and uh, liked them both quite a bit. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of which, your your project where you're doing your Guinness Book World Records is still mm -hmm. raging. I heard it, uh, it's looking pretty good. It looks like I'm going to be the newest uh, entry in the Guinness Book of World Records. Greg's competing to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for watching uh, 500 movies in 500 days. Well, I'm not competing against anyone. We sort of uh, looked in the book, and no one else had done this, so I thought it was something to try. We're 15 days in, and I've watched 19 movies, so I'm four ahead. I just have to get to 500 in 500 days, and then. Uh, Submit my form, and then I'm in the book. All right, well, part of history. Yeah, everybody, uh, show Greg his support. I'm showing you my support. Is there anything I could do? Let me know. Today's come, come to some of the movies with me. I'd like to because we actually had a. a I don't want to say it a date. We could call it what do they call it now, bromance, uh, where it was uh, Greg and I went and had dinner together. It was really nice, and we uh, saw a movie, uh, and um, I, I, I think that, uh, if you're not doing anything tonight, I'm gonna. Uh, I am probably. doing something. I was going to go watch the Indiana Jones trilogy on the big screen. Take care of three movies. That'll really put me ahead. So you should come along. I don't want to see three movies uh, tonight. but um, Skip yeah. the first one, come for the second two, and it um, could be fun. Yeah. What time's the movie at? First one's at 6.30. Crab is at 5.30? 4.45, because they're kind of slow. Okay. Kick-Ass 2, starring Jim Carrey. Another great Jim Carrey performance. Choey Clo... Cho Chloe... Cho Chloe... Cho Chloe... Cho Chloe, Clo Ch Chloe Grace Mortre Mortez, Alan Taylor, Alan Ta Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Christopher Mintz Plas. Made up names. The costumed high school hero Kick Ass joins a small group of normal citizens who have been inspired to fight crime. The Red Mist plots as an act of revenge that will affect everyone Kick Ass knows. I went to see this, and uh, at the end of the movie, I stood up and uh, I. Said so thank you, Jim Carrey. Always thank you, Jim Carrey. Now I got to tell you something. I did not see the first Kick Ass, so I walked into Kiss, uh, Kiss Kick Ass Two, lost and completely confused. I didn't know what was going on, completely disoriented, and I still loved the movie. I love the movie. I feel bad for Jim Carrey because I feel that an opportunity was lost. When you call a movie a controversial name like Kick Ass, you're going to lose half the audience segment right away. If they called it Kick It and kick it too, people will be more likely to take their kids to it, kick and I butt. think you do. Even that, you know, I think you want to have something that grandparents feel good about taking the kids to, and I think Kick Ass is a great movie, but a bad title. I so. just thought I'd go a brainstorm idea if Jim Carrey's watching, if he could do a movie called Kiss Ass, and he would be the teacher's pet. That could be funny. Brown noser type movie where he's the, perhaps he's the uh, star student, uh, but he would have to be an older student, so it'd be a back to school kind of scenario. And uh, I think that would be a lot of fun, and I'd love to see that movie. So if anybody's writing that movie, let me know. I'd love to be in it, too. That would be wild. All right, our next movie is Paranoid. Let's f***ing skip many, this movie. Did you rate it? Um, I'm giving Kick-Ass 2 one bag of... Uh, one soda and five bags of popcorn. So five bags of popcorn and one soda. Uh, a very disorienting film, but then I went back and watched Kick-Ass 1 and loved it. So I got caught up uh, with my the way I understand the movie. So how much do you give it? I'm going to give the movie five bags of popcorn, and I'm going to give the title zero bags of popcorn, because I think with a better title, you'd have more of an audience. All right, let's do a new seg uh, not a new segment, an old segment called On Cinema uh, On Location. And we did one last week, and people loved it. So what do you got uh, for us this week? This one's even better. Uh, this week, let's just say I've gone to San Francisco to uh, settle an argument. Can you show the thing? 
Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, we're here at the site of San Francisco's famous Star Trek II filming location. If you've ever seen Star Trek II, you will see Spock and Captain Kirk standing right here in Star Trek II uh, in front of this backdrop. And we have come here to prove once and for all that the film Star Trek II was shot right here in San Francisco. Here's your photographic proof, Tim Heidecker. Are you joking? Are you kidding me? Well, that didn't prove anything. Um, yeah, it did. No, because it we didn't had the prove footage. anything, Greg. We had you the footage and we had the still. Yes, you had footage from Star Trek IV, and you just said it was Star Trek II. It was Star Trek IV. No, I had I, footage. No, shut up for a second. I had I'll footage from the street of shut San Francisco. Up. I didn't have this footage from given Star to me Trek by IV. One of you guys you out there. The shut up. This was given to me by a fan out there. He sent it to me. Thank you very much. This is the novelization of Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, okay? This is a novel by Vonda Mc... This is this will settle the, the deal. Listen to this. Uh, but their trip is interrupted by the appearance of a mysterious, all-powerful intruder. Suddenly, Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the crew must journey back through time to 20th century Earth, for they, only there can they save the future by rescuing the past. And they have San Francisco right on the it's book. It's not an official book. It is an official book. It's a story by Leonard Nimoy and Harv Bennett. So I mean, well, Leonard Nimoy's made a whole career of doing things that kind of relate to Star Trek. It doesn't mean it's the official story. This is the official novelization, a novel based on Paramount Pictures' supreme space adventure, Star Trek Exactly, IV. based on this adventure of the whole Star Trek series. It's the Trek general series. story. It's where they go it's, back to San Francisco. I mean, it's not that hard to explain. No, because it's, have you seen The Hobbit? This is the Because this they're is the making building. three movies of The Hobbit, but it's only one book. This book compiles the first four Star Trek movies, the plots, and combines them into one book, just as The Hobbit book combines the three no, movies. It, no, I it says Star it. Trek IV right here. Not all the Star Trek movies are in this book, because they would, then it would just be, say, Star Trek. All the movies. I, mean, I could, I could buy a book about the history of the Jefferson Airplane and it would mention San Francisco, but that doesn't mean that's the basis of the Star Trek movie. That's what this is, the voyage home. They go back to Earth and are in San Francisco. No, I that, can't do it anymore. I can't listen to this bullshit from book, you. That hey. book is a compilation of the first four Star Trek movies into one book. Chief Medical Officer Christine Ch uh, Chapel stood in the midst of the chaos of Starfleet's command major mission room, huge curved windows presented by 180 degree views of, let me hear it, San Francisco Okay, what Bay. page is that? What page is that? 59. Okay, that proves my point. If it's that early in the book, it's because the second movie, when you take Star Trek, put them into one me? book. No, the Star Trek II, the San Francisco movie, it's going to be pretty early in the book. It's no. going to be somewhere around page 59. This is Star Trek IV. It's all this book is. No, they're telling you that all four movies are in one book. Star Trek IV, the four original movies. It's an interesting book. It's not as full of detail as the four movies are. You can't compress four movies into a book and have it really um, cover as much ground. So I would say the book, I give right. two bags of popcorn. But right. Star Trek II, which is set in San Francisco, I give five bags of popcorn. It's a popcorn classic. All right. Well, listen, I uh, have enjoyed having you on as a guest. Well, it's been good to be here and to settle this argument once and for all. Okay. You're so, right. You're right. I know. Okay. And thank you very much for yeah. being a part no, of this. No, I'm glad that we settled the argument because thank a lot you. of people Hold have been on. confused in renting the wrong up. Star Shut Trek. Shut up. Thank you for being a part of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... Honestly, do not think that it's a good match to have you on the show anymore. I think it's uh, uh, there's too much uh, conflict here, and I, I can't have all that this much conflict in my life right now. So I will need to make an adjustment with my guests, and uh, uh, I appreciate uh, everything you've done for the show, all the segments you've produced, and uh, I, I just don't think it's going to work out anymore. So uh, all the best, and... Um, 
guys, we will uh, rejigger things here and figure out a new guest for next week. But uh, Greg Turkington is no longer part of the show. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. I'm really sorry. Good ways. I'm very sorry, but I can't do this. I can't do it.